this thing is definitely pretty frightening, but uh, if you've seen anything like this, this is an example of a human model that shows uh, sensory and motor homunculi. And what this model shows is basically kind of the relative size proportion of the information that is received by the brain in terms of sensory input. So if you see a large tongue or really large hands, it means the somatosensory cortex or the motor cortex that's receiving information is getting a lot of information from the hands compared to, for example, the shoulders or other parts of the body. Uh, what we receive from the lips and the tongue and a lot of what's going on in our head is actually greatly expanded in proportion compared to like like the backs of our shoulder blades or other parts of our body uh, the thighs for example and this is simply because there's a greater density of receptors you can actually set up experiments like this as well too um, if we just use this for example pretend like this is an arm and this is your your hand um, there's something called the two-point discrimination test where you can basically use like a paper clip that's been bent and you ask somebody if they can tell if you're poking them with one end of a paper clip or with two ends of a paper clip really close together and it turns out that like the palm of your hand over here you're much better at distinguishing if there's actually two points there if you actually use the paper clip that had um, two points kind of bent like this and if you put this on the palm you would feel that it's actually two points but if you put it somewhere like on the back of the shoulder for example they would actually feel like there's only one point so that's just telling us that there are certain parts of our body that have a greater density of receptors and so that's what this scary model is actually showing or here's a two-dimensional form of this model it basically gives us an idea of what percentage of the actual world that we're experiencing is actually being spread across the map of our understanding of the external world. And finally, we'll have a quick look at the correlation between brain and body size. You can see here's kind of the relative brain sizes. Humans are in the middle with this uh, pinkish cloud, 1.5 kilograms, chimpanzee brain, 0 0.5 kilograms, an elephant brain is 5 kilograms. This is a logarithmic scale showing brain weight in kilograms drawn against body weight in kilograms. So in general, uh, this is a logarithmic scale, but there is a correlation. In general, if you have a larger body mass, it usually indicates that you have a larger brain mass. There are some exceptions, of course, and the main point for us to kind of understand is humans, um, in relation to body mass, we have a larger brain than most other animals in relation to our body mass. So that's an important thing to understand. And uh, in terms of our understanding of the sensory and motor homunculi and how we're actually able to process things in higher orders and the functions of the cerebral cortex, uh, there's some pretty exciting things that we are capable of.